Now let's say if you're given a right triangle, and here you have the angle theta, and this is 3, 4, and 5. Using this information, find the value of sine theta divided by 2. So let's write the formula first. This is going to be plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta divided by 2. Now, x and y are both positive. Therefore, this triangle is in quadrant 1. And so sine has to be positive. Now, all we need to find sine theta over 2 is the value of cosine. So cosine theta, based on this triangle, it's equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So cosine theta is 3 divided by 5. So now we could find sine theta over 2. So it's going to equal the square root of 1 minus 3 over 5 times 2. Now to get rid of the fractions, let's multiply the bottom and the top by 5. So we're going to have 5 minus 3. 5 times 1 is 5. 3 fifths times 5 is 3. And 2 times 5 is 10. 5 minus 3 is 2. And 2 over 10 reduces to 1 over 5. So we have the square root of 1, which is 1, divided by the square root of 5, which we can rationalize it. So this is equal to root 5 over 5. So I'm going to write that here. So that's the value of sine theta over 2. It's equal to the square root of 5 over 5 based on the triangle uh, that we have. Now let's find the value of cosine theta divided by 2. So this is going to be equal to the square root of 1 minus cosine theta over 2. And so it's very similar. So it's going to be 1 minus 3 over 5 times 2. Cosine theta is still 3 fifths. Now we're going to multiply the top and bottom by 5 as we did before. So this is going to become 5 minus 3 over 10. I take that back. This is supposed to be positive cosine theta. So this is 5 plus 3 over 10. So that's going to be 8 over 10, which reduces to 4 over 5. The square root of 4 is 2. So we have 2 divided by root 5, and then we've got to rationalize it. So it's 2 root 5 over 5. So that's cosine theta divided by 2. So now that we have sine and cosine, we can now find tangent. So tangent theta divided by 2 is simply sine theta over 2 over cosine theta over 2. And this is just one of the many ways you can find tangent. There's a lot of formulas that you can use. So sine theta over 2 is the square root of 5 over 5. Cosine theta over 2 is 2 root 5 over 5. So we can cancel the square root of 5, and we can cancel 5. So therefore, we're just left with 1 over 2. And so that's the answer for tangent. Another formula that you can use is this one. So we already have the value of cosine theta. We know it's uh, 3 over 5. But we don't have the value of sine theta. But we could find it using this triangle. Sine theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So it's 4 over 5. So let's begin multiplying the top and the bottom by 5. So first we have 5 times 1 and that's 5, and then 5 times 3 over 5, that's going to leave behind 3, and then 4 fifths times 5 is simply 4. So 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 over 4 reduces to 1 half, so we get the same answer. So tangent theta over 2, for this particular example, is 1 half. Now let's say if we're given another problem. Let's say that tangent theta 
is uh, 5 over 12. And theta, let's say it's between pi over 2 and pi. So find the values of sine theta divided by 2, cosine theta over 2, and tangent theta over 2. So go ahead and evaluate these three half angles. So the first thing we need to do is determine what quadrant we should draw the triangle. The triangle is located in quadrant 2. It's between 90 and 180. So here is the angle theta. Now tangent is 5 over 12. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite to theta is 5. Adjacent is 12. So this is the 5, 12, 13 triangle. In quadrant 2, x is negative, but y is positive. So now we can find cosine. Cosine theta of this triangle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So in quadrant 2, it's a negative 12 over 13. So now let's evaluate sine theta over 2. So sine theta over 2 is going to be equal to it's plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta. In this case, cosine is negative 12 over 13. And then that is all divided by 2. So we can make this plus because we have two negative signs. Now let's multiply the top and the bottom by 13. So 13 times 1, that's 13. And then here the 13s will cancel, giving us 12. And on the bottom, 2 times 13 is 26. 13 plus 12 is 25. So we have the square root of 25 divided by the square root of 26. The square root of 25 is 5. So it's 5 over root 26. And then we need to rationalize. So it's 5 root 26 over 26. Now I'm just going to write the answer here so I can have it for reference. So this is 5 square root 26 over 26. Now let's find cosine theta divided by 2. So cosine theta divided by 2 that's going to be equal to the square root of 1 plus cosine, which is negative 12 over 13, divided by 2. So let's multiply everything by 13 once again. So what we're going to have is 13. 13 times 1 is 13. And then 12 over 13 times 13, that's 12 and there's a negative sign in front of it, divided by 26. 13 minus 12 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. So we got 1 over root 26, and then we need to rationalize it. So cosine theta divided by 2 is the square root of 26 over 26. Now here's a question for you. Sine theta over 2, should it be positive or negative? Sine and cosine in this particular problem should both be positive. Now, notice that theta is between pi over 2 and pi. So in order to get theta over 2, we need to divide everything by 2. So theta over 2, the half angle, it's somewhere between pi over 2 and pi over 4. We don't know exactly where it is, but it's between 45 and 90. And that's in quadrant 1. So therefore, sine and cosine and even tangent of theta over 2 is all positive in quadrant 1. So now let's find tangent theta divided by 2. So that's sine over cosine.
So we can cancel the square root of 26 because they're the same. And we can cancel 26. So tangent is equal to 5. Now let's confirm this answer using another equation. Let's use this equation. Sine divided by 1 plus cosine. Sine theta is 5 over 13, opposite divided by hypotenuse. And cosine is negative 12 over 13. Now let's multiply everything by 13 to simplify the complex fraction. So on top, we're just going to have 5. On the bottom, we need to distribute the 13. 13 times 1 is 13. And here the 13s cancel, giving us 12. 13 minus 12 is 1. So the answer we get is 5, which means this is correct.